Hello, everybody, and welcome to another webinar from uh, from Exxon Pro. Um, my name is Gavin Green. I look after strategic solutions uh, for Exxon Pro, and today I've got Timothy White, uh, one of our engineering consultants, uh, with us today. So, what are we going to cover in to today's session? Uh, let's just build this up. So, condition monitoring, predictive maintenance, um, essential for optimizing equipment performance, reducing cost, improving safety. When you start bringing in uh, digital twins into that, um, you can amplify some of these benefits. Today's format of our webinar is going to be a little bit different, uh, not just us presenting information uh, to, to the users um, and demos, etc. What we're actually going to do is we're going to, through, going to go through a few discussion points, specifically around condition monitoring, predictive maintenance uh, from an engineer's perspective. Um, so let's dive right into that. Tim, do you want to just give us a quick intro to yourself, please? Sure. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, yeah, I um, have done three years as a reliability engineer in both process and open pit. And now I work as a software consultant slash engineering consultant for XM Pro. Perfect. And also uh, heavily involved and in, in leading different projects. So we're Nutrien or a few of them as well. Um, and very active, and he keeps pressing us around process improvement, etc. So, uh, very, That's very, uh, very big advocate uh, for that uh, insight. Some of the topics that we're going to cover. Um, so, fundamentals of condition monitoring, predictive. Uh, we, we have to start with a baseline. Where are we coming from, um, and then move from there. We're then going to go into data integration uh, and simulation. Um, bringing in some real-time data and IoT integration. We're then going to touch on some implementation challenges, uh, some of the data analytics, um, and then some best practices in predictive maintenance um, as well. Before we go into these topic areas, though, um, it's always good to, to just make sure that we have some uh, alignment on ter terminology, so we're all talking the same and we're not talking past each other. So just some of the, the common terms. So when we're talking around condition monitoring, we're talking around the, the process to continuously monitor and assess performance and health of machinery um, to detect issues and prevent unplanned downtime. When we're talking about predictive maintenance, uh, we're talking about a proactive approach using data analytics, machine learning to predict equipment failures so that we can perform timely maintenance uh, of them as well. And then the third, prescriptive maintenance, um, again, using data analytics, machine learning. This one recommends specific actions and optimal timing for maintenance tasks um, to, to maximize reliability and minimize downtime. The terminology around a digital twin, so Exim Pro is part of the Digital Twin Consortium. Uh, the definition uh, from the consortium does not include the model-based uh, item that we've got there. Um, however, we feel that it is, uh, it's, it, it is part of the definition. So when we're talking digital twins, we're talking around a model-based virtual representation of real-world entities and processes synchronized at a specific frequency and fidelity. We're going to talk around digital twins as we go through and, and how that links into condition monitoring, predictive, etc. But just to make sure we're all on the same baseline, what is it that we're talking around, and um, the uh, the common definitions to to build from um, as well. So let us move straight in um, to the first topic. So uh, we're going to put you in the hot seat, uh, hot seat here, Tim, so to speak. So the first area that we're going to chat around is the fundamentals of condition monitoring and predictive maintenance. So I've got a few questions on the side here. Um, we're not going to bring the questions up. We're happy to share with them after the webinar as well. So the first one, companies looking to, to implement a predictive maintenance solution, they often tell me they're not ready for it. Um, they don't know where to start. This is probably not a fit for them. How do you approach these types of discussions with them? That's uh, a really good question. You have to convince people also to spend money and open the purse strings. Um, yeah. So in, in reliability, there's, uh, there's a maintenance hierarchy that's typically based on program maturity. Um, mm -hmm. We start out at reactive, preventative, condition-based, and predictive and prescriptive. You kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. Uh, I would say that a company that tries to do everything all at once is going to waste quite
quite a bit of money and ruin any goodwill that the reliability group has generated with maintenance and operations. Uh, nobody starts with prescriptive maintenance without quite a bit of pre-work. They start small with condition-based monitoring and then move into a PDM program. Um, following that maintenance hierarchy, I would advise this company to start with CD, CBM or condition-based monitoring and then move to prescriptive and predictive modeling uh, as applicable based on asset criticality. Okay. Okay, no, I do like that. Um, the fact that there is a hierarchy there um, and there's, there's, there's steps to, to get to it. So people don't just jump into predictive maintenance from the get-go with nothing. There's a few puddles, as we call them, to, to go through to, to actually get them. Um, turning a little bit though, um, how does condition monitoring and predictive maintenance benefit from bringing in and integrating digital twins and event intelligent platforms into that? Um, that is a good question. I'll, I'll start out with what uh, an event intelligence platform is. Um, an event intelligence platform uh, helps analyze data collected from a variety of sources, including digital twins. Uh, they help identify patterns, trends, uh, anomalies. Um, they can significantly help PDM and condition monitoring reliability groups by giving uh, near real-time alerts um, to operation staff, uh, using machine learning models to detect deviations of sensors and processes. Um, they call it decision support, uh, prescriptive analytics. Um, what that means is when a certain predefined event criteria is generated, a uh, alert or warning with specific instructions on how to fix the issue or mitigate the issue is also generated in response to that. Uh, they're also incredibly useful for historical data analysis. Um, like moving on to digital twins, uh, they ideally ref reflect the current condition of the physical counterpart. Uh, this integration allows for reliability teams to uh, give maintenance groups the ability to visualize the, uh, they call it the life cycle of a system mm -hmm. in a controlled environment, um, meaning from install to failure, they can model it with enough data. Uh, reliability engineers, on that note, uh, they can predict failures using real-time data. Uh, there's, there's a concept in reliability called the potential for failure curve. Um, based on statistical modeling, you can put a particular asset uh, at a likelihood of failure. Mm -hmm. uh, planners can optimize maintenance schedules, basing rotation off of condition rather than just time. And then uh, on the more mature side, data scientists can test uh, input scenarios and improve designs through machine learning simulations. Um, integrating digital twins and event intelligence, the, I guess the most important part is the, the learning curve is significantly shortened. Um, you you okay. codify the uh, experienced operator intuition and knowledge. Okay. Quite a bit to unpack there. Um, if we move into data integration and, and simulation, so we've we've gone through how do we get to condition monitoring or predictive or prescriptive, um, the role a digital twin can bring into that, why it's beneficial. For all this to work though, data integration and simulation are going to play a key piece. So what role does data integration and simulation play in condition monitoring and predictive maintenance? Uh, a, a big one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, data integration and simulations play, uh, I'd call them crucial roles in predictive maintenance and condition monitoring, uh, especially combined with digital twins and event intelligence platforms, it's, it's the building block. Uh, focusing on data integration first, um, just to make sure everyone's on the same page, it refers to the process of con combining data from multiple sources into a single unified view. Um, consolidation of historical and real-time data means merging historical data with operational data 
um, patterns and trends can be more accurately identified. Um, it's it's your work order history, it's your shift notes, it's your vibration data in one display, um, ideally. With, uh, with regards to simulation for condition monitoring, it uses computational models and machine learning and and the more advanced programs they they delve into AI and TensorFlow and things like that. But uh, it the with the goal, the main goal is to imitate operations of real world processes and systems. Um, simulation allows for testing the predictive model and uh, ensuring they're accurate before applying them to actual equipment and operations, um, low risk testing for vari uh, variables. Um, scenario planning also helps understanding how different conditions might affect the system. Um, game theorying, better preparation and response strategies. Uh, and lastly, simulation provides uh, a virtual environment for training operators and technicians. Uh, you, you remove the risk of actually damaging equipment and also giving the operator an intuition without that risk. Mm -hmm. uh, together, I guess uh, data integration and simulation, they support creation of a holistic, uh, all-encompassing proactive maintenance strategy, um, better decision-making. They provide detailed, uh, insights into equipment health under various conditions. Um, right. Thereby, I guess the, the end result is reducing downtime and extending life of uh, the asset. Right. So is it also safe to say that um, from a data integration perspective, uh, by combining all these different data sources together, um, it allows for more complex analysis, which helps the accuracy of these predicted results so these two tend to work hand in hand yeah yeah absolutely it's it's the building block perfect perfect okay um so with that being said though and the criticality of the two of these and and how they all work together um what challenges exist in integrating some of these data sources uh quite a few um i guess one of the biggest ones is uh call them data silos mm -hmm. so um, different departments different organizations uh, they have their own systems and ways of doing things that uh, don't communicate very well with each other and they can hinder mm -hmm. that uh, unified view of data that a digital twin requires um, for example uh, truck liner bed thicknesses are on an excel document on one computer and fuel records are on an Excel document and another computer. Um, both are useful to digital twins, but they aren't useful in their current format and need to be exposed to the digital twin. Um, data quality and consistency is another big one. Uh, ensuring data is accurate and up-to-date and consistent across the various sources is crucial. Um, because you're relying on that for decision support, poor data quality can lead to incorrect analysis and faulty predictions. Um, complexity of integration, the data silos kind of touched on it, but um, multiple data sources and legacy systems typically don't talk very well with each other. Um, Real-time data processing, it's, it's costly, it's expensive in, in time and money. Uh, the ability to process real-time data is challenging, um, but it's also essential for timely decision-making for your PM groups and operations groups. Um, scalability is another big one. Uh, the system must be able to scale with growth and data and simulations without also growing in latency. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to work on a slow system. Um, models and simulation require uh, computational resources and the the better the model uh, or the excuse me the I guess um, models require high fidelity so the the better models require more data and that's challenging without continuous refinement and validation outcomes and I touched on computational resources the the more simulations you run um, the more computationally intensive it gets 
Um, cybersecurity is a big one that we've all seen. Uh, you're putting all of your data in one breadbasket and making it a much bigger target. So cybersecurity for everyone working is incredibly important. Um, expertise in in digital twins and in reliability, you you have to be able to speak across departments for both the data scientists and the uh, reliability folks. Um, when we spoke on cost, change management is also a big one. Uh, workforces are generally resistant. Anytime you have a technology like digital twins or event intelligence, machine learning, um, how the how the software is rolled out and who's involved and who has a stake in it can make or break the program. Um, and then regulatory compliance as well. Uh, ensuring data handling and processing comply with relevant regulations, whether it be SOX or some other regulation that I'm not aware of, um, especially in industries that are heavily regulated. Uh, addressing challenges, addressing the challenges requires a combination of strategic planning and investment in technology and training. Nobody's just going to happen upon it. And then development of new processes and government or governance models for data. Okay. So there's quite a few, <laughs> there's quite a few there to unpack. Um, yep. If we, if we just focus on the, the real time um, aspect of this. So real time data, because you, you alluded to it uh, earlier around um, passing real-time data to the models, uh, et cetera. So in, in your experience, what are the biggest challenges and opportunities when integrating IoT devices with intelligent digital twins, um, specifically for real-time monitoring in predictive maintenance, condition monitoring, et cetera? Uh, integrating IoT devices presents quite a few challenges into the um, digital twin. Uh, one of the biggest ones is data volume and management. Every IoT sensor you have, um, depending on the uptake, um, generates quite a bit of data. And managing it can be, it, it needs expertise. If it everybody's dealt with a system that isn't designed well. Um, we've talked about complex uh, complexity of integration, but it's important. So I'm going to repeat it. Uh, it's uh, IoT systems generally don't talk to each other. So um, you need somebody that can go back and forth between uh, sensor compatibility, quality and connectivity is huge. Uh, the, an accurate and expensive IoT sensor doesn't function without a reliable and secure wireless network. And I guess the other side of the coin is uh, there's no point to having a reliable and secure network if the data you're sending over it is inconsistent and not reliable. Mm -hmm. um, interoperability of sensor systems is big. Does your vibration monitor also allow you to integrate a temperature sensor? Um, regarding the change management side of it and hesitancy to adopt new technologies, kind of along the same vein, nobody wants to go to five different websites to interact with five different sensor types. <laughs> um, and I'm sure everybody's been in that situation too. Uh, latency and scalability, we, we, we talked about latency a little bit, but uh, we need asset views to load quickly, regardless of how many sensors or similar systems exist. And then maintenance. Um, Maintenance of the digital twin is crucial. Uh, depending on size and complexity, they normally require subject matter experts to maintain and modify the uh, HMIs or human machine interfaces. But mm -hmm. just like any other system, you have to maintain it. Uh, that being said, the, the rewards for a good integration are, I like to think they're exponential. Um, the pre-work, Done for one set required for one sensor is the same pre-work design for 20 sensors. Um, data silos are somewhat mitigated using pipelines, um, exposing data, making it more easily digestible. Uh, it improves asset performance. 
through that proactive maintenance strategy we talked about, prescriptive maintenance, and then uh, economies of scale. Um, the fixed cost for sensor implementation becomes much more palatable the more sensors you have attached. So that fixed cost mm -hmm. per goes down. Um, and then transparency is big. So all the stakeholders, whether it be IT or reliability or maintenance or operations, are, are all working off the a common set of data. And then a uh, short learning curve. So the uh, optimal state intuition or plant intuition, the 20 year plant operator has, um, can be codified into that digital twin. And that's why it's so important to have that buy-in from these operators and mechanics that have been it since I was in college. Um, but yeah, uh, another reward is automated decision-making um, with the right integration systems can automatically adjust processes uh, in response to data from IoT devices without hum uh, human intervention. And then um, safety, it, it's, a, a IoT sensor can exist in an environment where a person can't, um, so they're absolutely necessary. Um, operational efficiencies are improved when uh, equipment is operating at optimal levels. Everything likes to run in steady state, and that's aided by IoT. Um, addressing the challenges involves uh, cross-platform mix of technological solutions, strategic planning, and ongoing management. It's not fire and forget. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then opportunities, but. Interesting. Um, can you share a success story uh, where IoT integration um, with a digital twin has significantly improved um, other condition monitoring or predictive maintenance outcome? Uh, yeah, it, and this also goes to show how easily this stuff can be integrated into your system. Um, so a while back when uh, I was working in reliability, we had a uh, cone crusher that would get packed in during implement weather. Mm -hmm. uh, the cone would bounce. Um, once that dirt gets packed in, it becomes basically cement. And as the crusher spins around, it hops. And if you can imagine uh, a 50 ton block of iron hopping, <laughs> the uh, wear and tear on it was pretty tremendous. It would shake the entire building frame. So obviously that was not a desired outcome. Um, the vibration monitors on the cone crusher were internal to it. Um, so they could be changed unless the cone crusher was shut down. So a operator came to me with an idea to um, use a Raspberry Pi and a microphone to uh, create a decibel meter that wrote to our historian. Um, so with a little bit of Python code and a Wi-Fi signal, we, we created a proof of concept sensor that uh, fed directly into the control room HMI. And it worked in um, backing up the vibration monitors and sometimes um, replacing them whenever they went down. So, um, yeah, worked out well and it was cheap. <laughs> uh, cheap cheap uh, in the grander scheme of things, yeah? Cheap and it worked. Okay. So you, you've touched on some of uh, some of the items there. Um, focusing on implementation and, and data um, analytics. Um, what are some of the implementation challenge implementation challenges um, of a predictive uh, maintenance solution when involving digital twins? Uh, sure. The the implementation challenges um, for a digital twin for PDM um, they're call it multifaceted. Uh, they involve technical resources from IT, they involve advice from reliability groups, operational resources, and like I was talking about those 20 year mechanics and operators to provide advice in that common sense check. Mm -hmm. uh, integrating with existing systems, we, we sort of touched on the data stream designer earlier, but 
this is where it proves its worth. Uh, for that cone crusher example, I was able to perform the task without a lot of pre-work because uh, someone had built a Python library to access our historian and read mm -hmm. write. Um, without that library and connection to the API, it would have been pretty much impossible at my current skill level. Um, mm -hmm. The data stream designer has quite a few options for interacting with uh, historians, APIs, databases, um, makes the barrier to entry much lower when the API is already written. Um, another uh, challenge is data collection and quality. Uh, your model is only as good as the sensors and the people who help create it. Um, some assets need sophisticated sensors and some don't. And take for instance a, a redundant pump you don't need to throw prescriptive maintenance and machine learning models and everything like that if it's a hundred dollar replacement and it's got a redundancy. Um, so you have to weigh asset criticality as well mm -hmm. as um, ability. And then uh, it's this is the this is a big one. It delves into change management a little bit. It's absolutely necessary that your IT personnel and your data scientists at least have uh, a rudimentary understanding of the goals behind a PDM digital twin. And uh, the other side of that coin is your PDM group has to be able to communicate their needs to the data scientist team, the IT team. Mm -hmm. um, model development validation and maintenance is also another big challenge. Um, like I said before, digital twins aren't fire and forget. Uh, in addition to the regular maintenance required by any software, you also have to consider business needs of the plant change over time, and the digital twin has to evolve and grow uh, with the operation. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, go ahead. You, you, you touched on it earlier, and you touched on it a little bit here as well. Um, so data analytics and machine learning, how would they enhance some of the predictive capabilities? Uh, data analytics and machine learning for the more mature programs, um, they are designed inherently to detect patterns in data sets, um, whether through supervised learning or unsupervised learning. Mm -hmm. uh, pattern recognition is what they were designed for, finding hidden correlations. Um, they also help in anomaly detection of abnormal operating parameters. Um, predictive maintenance, uh, or excuse me, predictive modeling. Um, what happens if I change X and how likely is it gonna be to happen? Um, for optimizing maintenance schedules and life cycle management. Um, for example, uh, you take a truck engine or a haul truck engine, uh, life cycle can be 20,000 hours or 40,000 hours depending on condition. And when you're talking um, a million and a half, two million dollars for an engine replacement, it can definitely affect the bottom line of a company changing on condition rather than time. Mm -hmm. uh, root cause analysis is another one um, aided by anomaly detection. And then the findings of the root cause can then be fed back into the digital twin to uh, enhance the prescriptive aspect of it. Okay. Enhanced decision making and resource allocation. Um, clear analysis of data helps support decision making and prioritizing maintenance activities. Perfect. Moving on to our last uh, section and our, uh, our last question here, just keeping an eye on our uh, time for the folks as well, is can you highlight some best practices um, in condition monitoring and predictive maintenance? Sure. Um, some of the best practices involve, you, you have to have a strategy to start off with. Um, clear goals, clear objectives. Uh, also, you have to select the appropriate assets. Not every asset needs prescriptive analytics like I was talking about. Um, integrate data sources, operational maintenance records, sensor data, and environmental data where available. Uh, invest in quality sensors. Use data analytics and machine learning where applicable to help predict failure. Um, 
ensure real-time monitoring, regularly update the machine learning models to reflect current state, uh, train staff, create a feedback loop, um, and most importantly, communicate effectively across departments for um, visibility's sake. Okay, you, you touched on a few interesting ones there. Um, so from an X and Pro perspective, um, we follow some of those best practices ourselves. So how do we, how do we actually do that? Um, the first you'd mentioned, so identifying and prioritizing the bad actors. Two, predicting in real time using a hybrid approach. So how do we bring in some of the, you've touched on condition monitoring, predictive, prescriptive. So how from a hybrid approach can you bring some of those pieces in there as well? And then the last piece is uh, a quick time to value um, for this. Um, and that's aided with our blueprints, templates, um, et cetera, as, as well. I'd like to thank you, uh, thank you, Tim. Thank you for the time running through this, being, being sitting in the hot seat there, so to speak, uh, answering the questions and things uh, put to you. Thank you all for uh, listening and attending as well. Um, our, our next webinar next month, um, again, there's two options for you to attend uh, from a timing perspective. Uh, what we're gonna do is go through a root cause analysis application. So we actually have a blueprint for that as well, how you capture the recommendations, value, impact, et cetera. And as always, if you've got any questions, feedback, um, or you just wanna contact us for more information, right at the bottom there, just send us an email and we'll be happy to, uh, uh, to provide whatever it is uh, you're looking for. So again, Tim, thank you for your time uh, and everyone else, thank you for uh, attending today.